It's time again to uh, recap the latest news from the solar PV industry compiled by the American Solar Energy Society. I'm Jay Warnke with SolarPVTraining.com and this is what's happening in the world of solar for the week of June 16th. Well, U.S. companies just recently announced 11 new large-scale renewable energy projects uh, that they announced during the month of May. Now, this is a jump of about 37% on these announcements up over April and March of this year. These announcements, these 11 announcements, are set to employ about 1,300 full-time workers and will cost in excess of $950 million. Now, 41 major private uh, financed projects have been announced so far this year in 2024, bringing the total of private projects up to 316 since the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, was passed in August of 2022, which was designed to incentivize projects of this nature. Now, of these projects, interesting, on the political front, about 85% of them are located in GOP-controlled congressional districts districts, which is kind of interesting since every single Republican voted against this legislation. Solar panels are cheaper than they've ever been. Worldwide, the average wholesale price has dropped to about 11 cents per watt last week. Now, um, due to tariffs and other trade policies, module prices in the U.S. are about three times as expensive as they are in other parts of the globe, hitting an average wholesale price of around 31 cents per watt, according to Bloomberg NEF. Now, at the height of the worldwide supply chain shortages in 2021, worldwide prices had risen to about 28 cents per watt, while prices in the U.S. were right around 38 cents per watt. Prices since have fallen about 71% worldwide, while the U.S. is down only 18% from that high. Last month, the Biden administration announced that they were going to strengthen solar tariffs, allowing a 24-month pause on tariffs from panels from Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Thailand to lapse, and also increasing tariffs on Chinese panels from 25% of their cost up to 50%. Now, a new solar risk assessment report finds that losses due to physical damage from extreme weather events uh, may have been underestimated by as much as 300% using traditional methods for accounting for these losses. Climate change is resulting in the number of billion dollar weather event losses to dramatically increase in recent years. Um, in fact, in the decade following 2000, then the U.S. averaged about 6.7 of these billion dollar weather events each year. Then in the 2010s, uh, it, the average went up to about 13.1. And then 2020s, it's been in excess of 22 of these billion dollar weather events. And in fact, in 2023 alone, there were 28 billion dollar weather events in, in the U.S., uh, 19 of which were just simply very severe thunderstorms. Now, insurance companies have responded to this uh, increased damage due to weather by raising premiums, by limiting coverage, by increasing deductibles. Well, in the solar industry, hail is still the number one cause of damage of these solar panels. Um, solar operators have found that if you stow the panels at 75 degrees or, or greater as the storm approaches, you basically tilt them vertically. Uh, then the chance if they're hit by hail, and some of this hail is pretty extreme, like three and a half inch uh, balls of hail coming at these panels at about 94 miles per hour. Well, if they're stowed at 75 degrees or greater, then the risk of damage is down to about 1%. Now, voltage collapse is another issue that solar operators have to deal with. And basically, um, panels work better. They produce more voltage when it's colder, less voltage when it's warm. So in colder climates, they have to decrease the size of the string to avoid creating too high a voltage in very cold weather. Well, when we have extreme heat in the summertime, what happens is the reverse, and the voltage off of these smaller strings actually declines below the minimum that the inverter needs to operate, which causes the array not to produce any power during these uh, heat, heat uh, situations, these extreme heats. A study, this study found that um, more than 30% of all utility scale systems uh, out there have experienced some sort of, some form of voltage collapse during warm summer weather. 
Photovoltaics, which is uh, also known as FPV, it's basically putting solar panels on water bodies, has been little more than a novelty until very, very recently. But a new study has, uh, published recently in the journal um, Nature Water finds that the, a number of nations could meet a significant portion of their energy demands by putting solar just on water bodies. Now, the study limited this to um, these water bodies that are within 10 kilometers of population centers that do not either dry up or freeze for more than um, six months out of the year. Now, FPV has a number of advantages over land-based systems. For one thing, it doesn't use up land that could be used for other, other purposes. It also, uh, the evaporation from the water is cooling on the panels and they'll produce a little bit more electricity. And covering those water bodies with these solar panels does reduce the um, amount of evaporation from these um, water bodies and also minimizes some of the algae blooms that occur during warm weather. Study found that many countries, um, mainly in Africa, the Caribbean, South America, and Central Asia, could get as much as 40 to 70% of all of their power needs by locating solar panels on water bodies. And according to the latest numbers um, by FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, the renewable energy accounted for 99.2% of all of the new generating capacity in the United States in the first part of 2024. The installed utility solar, uh, scale solar now is in fourth place in generating sources at 8.56%. That's behind natural gas, which leads at 43.58%, coal at 15.7%, and wind at 11.77%. And that is the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you in two weeks.